What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Henry, aka Double H, back at it with yet another banger video. And in today's video, I'm going to be going through and completing every single Jordan challenge for NBA 2K23 in one video. Now, if you're old enough to remember anything about these challenges back in 2K11, they were very, very difficult. Now, all these games I'm going to be playing on in this video are on Hall of Fame difficulty, and I'm going to let y'all know right now, I, I definitely needed to, uh, you know what I'm saying, take some extra attempts at some of these guys. They're not too easy. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. But anyways, in this video, I will be showing you all the cutscenes and literally walking you through step by step how I beat all the Jordan challenges and unlocked these exclusive rewards. Make sure to drop a like on this video right now, y'all, because I put a lot of time and effort into this video with recording and editing, and it would be much appreciated. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, because a fun fact, your boy is the first person in the world to complete all the Jordan challenges. So drop a sub for that. You know, I love that deserves a sub. Come on now. But anyways, without further ado, let's get straight into this banger, man. Let's get it. Okay, y'all, so we are in the main menus of NBA 2K23. Now, as of today's date that I'm recording the video right now, it is September 5th, 2022. This game, NBA 2K23, doesn't even re release until September 9th. So I have early access to this game, and I decided why not try to be the first person in the world to complete all the Jordan challenges for NBA 2K23. Now, I don't know how long this is going to take. It might take a day, two days, whatever. But I'm going to try to finish this as fast as possible. It's definitely going to be irritating. It's definitely going to take me some attempts. It's definitely going to be hard. But I'm going to try to get this video up as fast as possible for y'all boys. Anyways, let's go ahead and get to the first challenge. We got to win the game, score 16 points, and grab nine rebounds. Let's get into it. Well, for Michael Jordan... His legendary stature begins here at the University of North Carolina. Interestingly enough, when Michael came into college, he wasn't thought of as going to be the savior to North Carolina. North Carolina was already number one team in the nation. So all of a sudden he comes into this talented team where he could develop and learn his skills and learn his craft. And I think that was the best thing for him. The game between North Carolina and Georgetown this game is so important because you have three top 75 players playing in this game. Patrick Ewing was probably the premier player in college basketball uh, along with James Worthy. Uh, and now you're adding Michael Jordan to the mix. Michael became a focal point with inside of the game that I don't know if Georgetown was aware of or was ready for. I think Michael Jordan hitting that game winning shot propelled him uh, into a great stratosphere of confidence. This is where he honed his skills, become the greatest basketball player that we've ever seen. Now New Orleans is buzzing tonight with the national championship in the Superdome. Now let's go over to tonight's public address announcer, Tommy Edwards. Fans, welcome to the college championship game. Today's matchup, the Georgetown Lions and the North Carolina Tar Heels. For Georgetown, at power forward, standing six foot eight, number 12, Harold McCray. For North Carolina, at point, at six feet three, number 32, Adam Barclay. For Georgetown, at shooting guard, at six feet three, number 14, Roy Duncan. For North Carolina, at the small forward position, at six foot six inches, number 51, Greg Bateman. For Georgetown, at the other forward position, at six foot six inches, number 31, John Nash. For North Carolina, the man in the middle, number 41, 6'9", 224-pound sophomore from Brooklyn, New York, 
Sam Perkins. For Georgetown at goal, number 21, 6'3", 170 pound senior from Gastonia, North Carolina, Eric Kroll. For North Carolina at goal, number 23, 10, the man in the middle, number 33, 7 feet, 220 pound freshman from Cambridge, Massachusetts, Pat Hewitt. For North Carolina at forward, number 52, 6 9, 219 pound junior from Gastonia, North Carolina, James. to the time here in New Orleans. It's the 1982 National Championship game. The Georgetown Hoyas facing off with the North Carolina Tar Heels. With Clark Kellogg, Coach Mike Vitello, and our reporter David Aldridge, this is Kevin Holmes. Mike, both of these teams featuring incredible freshmen. For North Carolina, Clark Michael Jordan has been fantastic in about 13 points per game, shooting well over 50% from the field. Jordan is a big game player. And for the Hoyas, Clark, the seven-foot freshman, Pat Ewing leads the way. And you know what, Kevin, defensively, I don't know if I've seen anybody better than Ewing. Controls the paint, protects the rim, and you can be assured that Pat Ewing is going to make it tough for Carolina to score the ball inside. And, and even as a freshman, he will have an impact on this game. Yeah, I agree. In the Hoyas backcourt, Sleepy Boyd and Roy Duncan. With John Nash and Harold McRae at the forward. And star Pat Ewing is the five. For UNC, it's Adam Barnett and Michael Jordan at the guard spots. At forward, Craig Bacon and All-American James Worthy. And Sam Perkins is the center. These schools' talented freshmen, they will have a lot to say about who wins tonight. Here we go. Yo, this camera angle, dude. All right, I fixed the camera angle. Now, I'm a little worried about this CPU because, you know, I haven't played these challenges since, what, 2K11 when it was in the game? Okay, Jordan! My first bucket of the video. What I did hear, though, is they play like it was back in the day. So, what? Okay. Okay, well, good stop. But, anyway, so it's like, what, 1984 right now? So, they're going to be playing through the center. They're not going to be shooting no threes. I mean, there's not even a three-point line. I don't know what that was. I'm going to have to play realistic. Okay, hit him with the jab. Yes, sir. Little midi. Oh, no. We got to get used to Jordan, bro. Now, this is a lower overall Jordan because it is North Carolina Jordan, but like, I don't know, man. We got to play realistic. We can't. You can't be shooting threes. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to drive to the basket. Hold on. Hold on. Hop step. Hey, come on, Jordan. While older players like James Worthy might be the leader of UNC, youngster Michael Jordan is the fire of the Tar Heels. Okay, they're, they're, they're literally playing through the center. How is that not a steal? Look at Patrick Ewing, yeah. We're, we could just look at this guy's not even shooting. Oh, yeah, Jordan. Come on. We, we call him the isolation. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Spin move. You jump. Oh, okay. We'll take the foul. We'll take the foul. Come on. First free throw. Green. Yo, those delayed greens are crazy. I ain't gonna lie. We're gonna have to get used to the... What? I mean, if no one's gonna shoot threes, we're just dumb. He's on... What? Isn't that deep? Oh, yo, Patrick Ewing. Okay. A little blitz. A little blitz action. Come on, Jordan. Oh, we can hang on the rim. We can hang on the rim. I'm going to hang on it. This is a new feature. First time. Yo. Yo. Is that a tech? Did I just get a tech? Hold on. Yo, I just got a technical foul for hanging on the rim. That's cr that is crazy. Yo, Ewing is actually like going to be hard to guard. Okay, Jordan, we'll take the foul. We'll take it. We're going to take these fouls all day. Like, I feel like we're going to get a lot of free points at the free throw line. Look at Green. I know his free throw already. Like, we're about to be a GOAT with Jordan. Come on. I'm going to get better and better with him. Now, I know these CPUs are going to start making some crazy contested shots. Look at they're playing through the center. They're playing through Ewing. We out here in 1980. Green in that? Okay, Ewing? All right, we're going to have to play like him. Like, Jordan has a good post game. Let's test it out. Little, little post hop shot. 
Green? I'm like that. Oh, yeah, Jordan. Oh, yeah, we on the break. We need these points. Five more points. Come on. Yes, sir. We'll take it. Five more points, y'all. Come on. That's green. I don't know how I missed the first one. Yo, I'm getting easy steals. Another blitz. Another dunk. Look at one more bucket, y'all. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's baby food. Yo, early. Oh, look at the pass to Sam Perkins. Five NBA players in this game. Ewing, George Perkins, Floyd, Worthy. A star-studded championship game. All right. Yo, what? A heavily. Yo, these CPUs are really about to piss me off, bro. They're really starting to make... They're going to make me angry at this video. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How am I missing that? Go back to Jordan, yo. This is, this is a free bucket. Hold on. Oh. Yo. Now I ain't going to lie. We might have to start attacking the basket a lot. Because this is free points at the free throw line. We're just doubling, like... Yo, this, this Nash dude is a shooter. Okay. Okay, let's test that fadeaway out. Come on, Jordan. Early? What? Dude, they are feeding Ewing. Green again. Oh, my God. All right. Tie game going into the half. We have our points. We just need to get some more rebounds and then win the game. The streets of New Orleans, a city with so much history. With Clark Kellogg, Mike Fratello, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Hunt. Coming to you live from New Orleans. All right, we back. Come on, Jordan. Fade away. Green. Yo, that's his bread and butter, ain't it? We got to use that. Come on, Jordan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. James Worthy. Well, you have to box that out, clearly. And you can't over-attack him. Oh, yeah. Look at the defense. Yes. Give me that rebound. Okay, three more rebounds, y'all. We're ready for this rebound. Come on, Ewing. That's a bad shot. That's a bad... What? Green bat? Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Give me, yo, he grained it. I cannot get a rebound, dude. We have six minutes. And one? Yo, are we serious? Patrick Ewing is a cheat code, and so is this CPU, yo. Like, these shots they are making are crazy. He's not making that. Yes, free board, two more rebounds. Ewing is wild, bro. This dude post hooking from the free throw line. Okay, we got the nine rebounds. We just need to win the game now. Okay, we're up to three minutes. This is not good, bro. Oh, my God. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Go, 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 go. What? Yo. Yo, I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> Come on. Ewing is boxed. No way. Come on. Get a board, bro. Oh, they are feeding him. There is no chance this dude just got another and one. They're literally about to take the lead with two minutes. I swear we've been winning the whole game until now. And now we're losing. We're losing. Oh, yeah, Jordan. Oh, yeah, Jordan. That's baby food. That's the new bully badge. Come on. This entire tournament, North Carolina has been outstanding executing in the second half. We need to stop. We need to keep getting stops. Come on. He's boxed. Yo. Oh, my God. I just fouled out with Jordan. Yo, thank God I have his stats for the challenges. We still need to win, but that's bad. Like, we're only up three points. This dude, Ewing, has takeover. Oh, no. To the middle. Oh my god. Come on. Come on. We got this. Get a stop. 50 seconds. Double him. No, no. Oh my. Come on. Oh, I see Worthy. Come on, Worthy. Easy dunk. James Worthy. Come on. Yo, why is Ewing wide open, dude? We gotta feed. We gotta feed Worthy, bro. He's the best player left, yeah. Quick isolation. Kill some time. 25 seconds. Come on, Worthy. Yup. Come on, man. Give me that lead back. We need to stop. 15 seconds. I'm doubling. He's, they're not going to shoot a jump shot. They're, they're only scoring the paint. 10. Oh, my God. No. No way. <laughs> what? No. What do I do? Six seconds. We're going to have to call a timeout. We're going to have to call a timeout. Oh, my God. Okay. Like, what? I don't know what to do. We're giving it to Worthy. He's, oh, my God. Oh, this guy's wide open. Come on. Come on. I greet it. <laughs> Let's go! One second! One second! There's no way, right? You're not making that. That doesn't count. We won! We won! And the North Carolina Tar Heels are national champion. What a season. 32 and 2. Now a national title to make it complete. James Worthy, Michael Jordan, Sam Perkins. It was a blend of youth and experience for UNC. And for the Hoyas Club, a bitter defeat. But they'll be back. Kevin, as long as they have Pat Ewing, I think Georgetown makes another title run next year. I agree.
Yo, for the first challenge, that was way too close for my liking. Uh, thank God we somehow won that game. I don't know how that dude was wide open. We get the game winner. Jordan, 10 for 27. I didn't shoot that well. But it is what it is. James Worthy had a great game. 16 points. Patrick Ewing was destroying us. 28 and 10. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next challenge, which is challenge number two. All right, we are on to challenge number two, which is the Got Next Challenge. We're going to the against the NBA All-Stars. We have to win the game, score 12 points, win by 15 or more. This should be pretty easy. Let's get into this challenge right quick. The first time I ever saw Michael Jordan was in 1981 at the McDonald's All-American Game in Wichita, Kansas. As soon as I saw him on the court, he was different. Every practice session was like game seven. And he did that relentlessly every single session. Okay, he's dominating us. He's the, he's the best player in the gym by far. You see this, but can he do it against NBA players at that next level? 1984 Olympic team, we went on a, somewhat of an NBA tour against NBA All-Stars to prepare for the Olympics in LA. All the stars showed up. Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, Kevin McHale. The best player on the court was Michael Jordan, this junior from the University of North Carolina. And I think ultimately, it, it was the preview of the greatest player of all time coming on the scene. Here at Custody for the first ever event here at the Hoosier Dome in downtown Indianapolis. What a magnificent venue. And now let's go across the floor. Time to hear the player introductions. Welcome fans to the exhibition matchup. The starting lineup for Team USA. A 6-1 sophomore from Washington, D.C. and Duke University, number 24. Heat Reynolds. A 6'4 senior from Barberton, Ohio, at the University of Arkansas, number 8, Brooke Perez. A 6'9 senior from Brandon, Florida, and Vanderbilt University, number 18, Jeff Turner. A 6'7 sophomore from Brantley, Alabama, and Auburn University, number 45, Chuck Person. A 7-foot junior from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Georgetown University, number 6, Patrick Ewing. A 6'1 freshman from Newcastle, Indiana. He plays at Indiana University. Number four, Steve Alford. A 6'2 junior from Wilmington, North Carolina. Number nine, Michael Jordan. A 6'6 junior from Brooklyn, New York, and St. John's University, number 13, Chris Mullen. A 6'9 sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the University of Oklahoma, number 12, Wayman Tisdale. A 6'9 senior from Lake New York and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, number 14, Sam Perkins. Welcome everyone, Kevin Harlan along with Clark Kellogg and coach Mike Fertella and David Aldridge on the sideline. Mike, the crowd is buzzing as we get ready to see Team USA going head-to-head -head with the team of NBA stars. You could understand the excitement in this building. And it's easy to see why some of the best collegiate athletes in the nation on Team USA. Well, the NBA star squad is just stacked up with their top.
top-tier talent. Now, this game, Clark, only an exhibition contest. But the fans, my goodness, they seem pretty invested already. And I can see why, Kevin. What a sight to behold. I mean, this might even be a once-in-a-lifetime assemblage of talent. That goes for both of these teams. I mean, you don't often get a chance to see this many big-name players on one court. I am so glad you and I are here to see it. Out there for Team USA, we've got Steve Alford and Michael Jordan at the one and two. Then Chris Mullen at the small four. Raymond Tisdale at power four. Down low, it's Sam Perkins. And out there for the NBA stars, Isaiah Thomas is running things at the point. With Jim Paxson and Mark McGuire at the two and three. And then it's teammates Larry Bird and Robert Parrish filling out the front court. We know this game doesn't go on anybody's record. Well, you can tell these players aren't about to come out here and just... Ah, uh, we are in the game. All I got to do is score 12 points and then just win, like, by a decent amount. So this should be good. All right, I'm bugging, I'm bugging, I'm bugging. I thought I could shoot threes. I really thought I could shoot threes. Like, it's still too early on in the NBA, you know? All right, look at me, look at me. We're back to the post fate. The post... Yo, the post hop shots create a lot of space, bro. That's great. Look at me. No energy. We bowling you, IT. We bowling you. That's green, baby. Yo, this dude is a part of the bad boys, bro. We got no respect for you, IT. Give me that. Come on now. Oh, the way. Okay, Jordan. Hang on that rim right quick. Get some hang time up there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Bread and butter. Bread and butter. That is green. Yo, one more bucket. One more bucket. Nah, that's too easy. It's too easy. Now he's going to win. That bird is horsing down there, man. Who is that? They're throwing backdoor lobs? What are they calling plays? Bro, is that Kevin McHale? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, he lucky, bro. They are really feeding Kevin McHale. He green that? Of course it's contested. Bro, we got this dude, like, double team. And he's, he's still going. Bro, can we get a rebound? Kevin McHale, he's... What is he going for, MVP? He made that? Heavily. What the heck? Oh, yeah. Little hezzy. Open midi. That's green, baby. Come on now. All right, that's the end of the first half. I'm not going to lie. This challenge is a lot easier than the first one. Like, we are literally destroying them. And all I have to do is just, like, basically play out the rest of the game. Welcome back, everyone, for the second half of action in this exhibition game between Team USA and the NBA Stars. It has been a fun one so far. Yo, up 17 going into the second half against NBA All-Stars is crazy. Like, look at me. Hey, oh my. Yo, that post hop shot. Look at Jordan, man. Come on. Oh my. Oh, I thought I was about to block that. Yo, what is... Is is that Craig Elo? Like, what is he doing here, bro? He made that? Wait, no, that's Larry Bird. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Easy win. Easy win. Another challenge complete, man. And so it's Team USA who was able to capture a win over the NBA Stars in this exhibition contest. Mike, what a game we just saw. You have to respect what Team USA was able to accomplish here, going up against top-tier competition and managing to come away with the win. And the NBA stars taking a loss in Clark that luckily doesn't go on any of their records. Yeah, I doubt that makes it sting any less, though, Kevin. Getting shown up and beaten by young guys is going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. But like we said, a terrific performance by Team USA. You got to give them credit. Yep, they went the distance. Clark Kellogg, Mike Fratello, and David Aldridge, and the rest of our 2K team, this is Kevin Harlan signing off. And we'll see you next time. It was, it was literally so free. Larry Bird was going off, though. He was dogging us. Mark Aguirre was doing good. Kevin McHale was locked in. We had IT clamped out i literally dropped 46 and four and eight and four like they asked for four what 12 points to 46 All right, y'all, moving on to challenge number three, the arrival. We have to win the game, score 63 points, and get six assists. This should be a good one. Michael was uh, extremely competitive in everything he did. 
In Michael's second year, the Bulls were not any good, and we were the Boston Celtics, and we were on our way as one of the greatest teams ever to play basketball at any level at any time. In game one, we kill them. Larry, Kevin, Chief, Danny, DJ, they have great games. And at the end of the game, we look at the box score, and this guy named Michael Jordan, he's got 49 points. We just said, well, yeah, he's pretty darn good, but he'll never do that again. Game two takes 41 shots, makes 22 of them, takes 21 free throws, and makes 19 of them, and goes for 63 points. The Celtics are able to win the game in double overtime, 135 to 131. But we knew how lucky we had been to win that game because Michael was just so spectacular. That was the game where Larry Bird in his post-game media comments said, I've just seen God disguised as Michael Jordan. The rest is history. Following the freedom trail to the cradle of liberty, Daniel Hall. We're here in Boston for game two of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Hi everyone, Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Mike Fratelli. Mike Boston holds a 1-0 lead in this series. And the Celtics showed how dominant they were in game one. This is a team that only lost one time at home all season. The Bulls were up against the odds in this one. And for Chicago, they'll be hoping for another big night from Michael Jordan. Well, Kevin, in game one, he did all the heavy lifting for the Bulls on offense. The Celtics had no answer for him as he went for 49 points. We'll see if they keep looking his way as they try to even up this series. And the Bulls will start with Charles Oakley and Dave Corzine at the 4-5. and five. And in the point will be Kyle Macy. And on the wings, it's the fearsome duo of Michael Jordan and the Iceman, George Gervin. And the Celtics fought at front court. Bird and McHale at the forward with Robert Parrish in the middle. The backcourt pairing for them, Dennis Johnson and Danny Ainge. And the Bulls are in dire need to even this series. Losing by 17 points in game one. All right, we are in the game. 63 points is a lot, but I think we got this. You know what I'm saying? We do have to get six assists, too. I, I usually don't pass with energy. I ain't going to lie. So we're going to have to lock in on that eventually. Look at, like, easy bucket right here to my boy Dave. Come on now. I'm telling y'all, MJ's post game is money in 2K23. I'm already knowing Larry Bird about to go crazy. Like, he's green and all contested. Can we shoot threes? Can we shoot threes yet? Uh, no, <laughs> we can. Okay. Is Bird going to make another? No, he's not. Yo, a late? Are we serious? Yo. Yo, the Celtics don't miss. They make every contested shot. Come on now. Jordan on the break. Come on. Tie game. Step back. Oh, yeah. Green. Okay. That's our first three, is it? I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's locked up. That's locked up. And won heavily. Yo, they just don't stop making contested shots. This AI is actually crazy. Wait, hold on. Another post fadeaway. I'm telling y'all, man. It's literally unstoppable. Yo, Larry Bird touches the ball every single play. Look at him. That's box. He's not. Another green heavily. Yo. All right. Back in the post with MJ. Y'all know what we're doing out here. We got 30 plus. Okay. Can we get a rebound? Like Kevin McHale. Another heavily. Uh-huh. Shot clock. Cheese, baby. Going into the half, we got hella points. Saw that time on the clock and let that shot fly perfect. 45. That is how you end the quarter. Gets it to go and they are elated at the break. And so it's Chicago in the driver's seat. Up eight points at the end of the quarter. Their shooting has been the big key. Their percentage from the field so far has been terrific. We'll get right back to the action when we return. Third quarter set to begin as the lights of Pat Bay brighten up the sky in Massachusetts. We're here in Boston for game two of the Bulls and Celtics. Second half of play getting going here in Boston. We are literally up 12 points. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be the easiest 63-point game. Yo, this... Um, heavily after heavily. He doesn't miss. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on, NJ. Talk to him nice. Hang on that rim, coach. Shot clock cheese again. 
Shot clock cheese again. <laughs> Yo, MJ's a demon, bro. We start in the quarter with 57. Another green. This is going to be an easy challenge, bro. He's, he's, I don't know what I was doing right Yo, they are making a comeback, bro. Larry Bird is making contested hooks. Yo, this AI won't let up. I'm telling y'all, when y'all play these challenges, these AIs are about to make hella contested shots. We need an assist here, though. We're one assist away, and we're five points away. There's another bucket. Come on, let's get it. Yo, like Larry Bird just pulling up in my face. Come on, MJ. We need an assist. Pick and roll. Oakley, bully him. Bully him, Oakley. All we need is literally a bucket. Come on. Are they going to foul me? Come on, foul me. Thank you, bro. We're up five. 30 seconds left. We should be chilling. Like, we just got to make these two free throws. We complete the challenge. And then we just got to win the game. Green, I don't miss free throws with MJ. It doesn't happen. His release is too easy. Come on, Boston. Y'all not messing with Jordan. Easy green. Come on. I don't even know why they're calling timeouts. Like, the game's over. You're down seven with 30 seconds left. You're not making that. Okay. Like, we're literally chilling. Like, why are they fouling still? All right, we made both free throws. Dude, why is he just wide open, though? You know? Like, the game's over. Why are they trying so hard? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get him. Get him. <laughs> He's not making that. He's not making that. Chill, chill. Hold on. Why? They're fouling again. Are we serious? Oh, I made one of the free throws. I They called another timeout. I don't know what they're doing. Like, Bird, you choked. You lost, buddy. MJ owns you. How do we tell... Yo. Yo, why did they get so many chances at the end there? The Bulls might have come into Boston and gotten a win. Great performance from them. The series tied at 1-1. And the next two games in Chicago, the Bulls now have a real look at pulling off a miracle. Well, Clark, the Celtic fans have to be feeling a little bit nervous after losing this game at home. No doubt about it, especially when they hit with Michael Jordan in Chicago the next few games. Jordan at home has been electric. And if he gets hot, the Celtics might not make it back home. Things have gotten very interesting. For our terrific reporter, David Aldridge, along with Clark Kellogg and Mike Fratello, I'm Kevin Hart saying thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll see you later. So we end up beating Boston. Larry Bird went off for 41. But y'all already know. MJ was going crazy. This is definitely by far my best shooting game. Like usually I'd be shooting like 50%. We had six assists, two steals, a block, three rebounds. Hey, Oakley and Gervin got some buckets too. Hey, we were locked in. We're moving on to challenge number four. Here is challenge number four, star of stars, Eastern All-Stars versus Western All-Stars. We got to win the game, score 40 points, grab eight rebounds, and get three assists. This one's going to be kind of tough, low-key. The thing that I liked most about Michael Jordan as a player was the fact that I didn't have to try to guard him. <laughs> he had a, a, a poor defensive scheme. He was going to fill the hoop up until he either figured it out or the game was over and you lost the game. Some of his uh, acrobatic drives to the hoop are, are just remarkable. You know, you can get past the defense and use a little bit of English off of the glass. The ball drops in so nice. It takes some really advanced skills to do that consistently. The 1988 All-Star Game was a showcase for, for Michael. Michael had figured out all the things he needed to know to be a dominant player. Everything. One-on-one, -on -one, uh, couldn't guard him. <laughs> what Michael Jordan showed the whole uh, sports world was the fact that uh, you put the right people with him, he's going to lead them to world championships. Without question, he was a prime example of, of excellence and a leader that would lead you all the way to the top, all the way to the top. That was uh, basketball at its finest.
these quiet winter streets as all the action is inside the raucous Chicago Stadium. Now, let's go over to tonight's public address announcer, Tommy Edwards. Welcome, fans, to the All-Star Exhibition Game. Get up and get loud for your West All-Star. At forward, making his seventh All-Star appearance, the standout veteran of the Denver Nuggets, 6'7", Alex English. Making his All-Star debut, the front court star of the Utah Jazz, the mailman, 6'9", Carl Malone. The man in the middle, an All-Star, each of his four pro seasons from the Houston Rockets, seven feet, Akeem Olajuwon. At guard, making his first All-Star appearance, the virtual star of the Denver Nuggets, 6'3", Lafayette, back, Lever. And the NBA leader in the sixth, in his eighth All-Star game from the Los Angeles Lakers, 6'9", Urban Magic Johnson. The head coach of the West All-Stars is Brad Nelson. Let's hear it for your West All-Stars. And now, the starting lineup for the Eastern Conference. At forward, a three-time most valuable player, an All-Star each of his nine seasons from the Boston Celtics, 6'9", Larry Bird. He's one of the NBA's most exciting players in his third All-Star game from the Atlanta Hawks, 6'8", Dominique Wilkins. The man in the middle, an all-star for the tenth time. One of the game's most rugged rebounders from the Washington Bullets. 6'10", Moses Malone. At guard, the most valuable player of the 1984 and 1986 All-Star Games. This Chicagoan is making his seventh All-Star appearance from the Detroit Pistons. 6'1". Isaiah Thomas. And finally, the NBA leader in scoring and steals. An all-star each of his four seasons. The charismatic star of the Chicago Bulls. 6'6", Michael Jordan. The head coach of the East All-Stars is Mike Fittal. Welcome everyone to Chicago for the 1988 All-Star Game. On my side, Clark Kellogg, and our sideline reporter tonight, David Alder. I'm Kevin Hart. And Clark, this is the second time Chicago has hosted this mid-season classic. Yeah, you go back to 1973, that's when they hosted their first one. The East won it 104 to 84 back then. That was the lowest combined score in an All-Star game, Kevin, since the 1950s. We'll see if then tonight, Clark, they can surpass that total. I would think they could. No shortage of scores on either side. I expect a tempo, fast-paced game, an exciting game with plenty of highlights and buckets. Cannot wait. And your West All-Stars, Fat Lever and Magic Johnson, the guards, Alex English and Carl Malone at the forward spots, and in the middle, Hakeem Olajuwon. For the East, it's Mozone inside, and Dominic Wilkins with Larry Bird, the forward. And in the backcourt, Isaiah Thomas and Michael Jordan. And you look at Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, rivals since college, early on, no love lost between them, but over time, they've become friends. And it's the West All-Star. Uh, hopefully they don't play defense just like they do these days. Nah, that's definitely not the case. But hey, green to start off the game. Okay. Yo, I needed that rebound. Elijah on, bro. Okay. Back him down. Come on, Magic. What you got on MJ, Magic? Hey, let's get a quick assist, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, get, get that, get that little bird. Get that the bird. Garene. Wait, did I even get an assist with that? I didn't. Yo, Elijah one. Okay, the post hook. Yo, Elijah one is Duffy. Sir, MJ. Uh-huh. Okay, look at that pass. Yo, MJ. Look at, we already got our assist, yo. 
Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. Yup. Yup. It's too easy. I I've literally mastered this jump shot, yo. All right, that's halftime. I'm not going to lie. We're doing pretty good so far. With the lead standing at six points here at the end of the quarter. We're feeling very confident shooting the ball with great efficiency and dictating the pace. We come back right after this. And we welcome you back to the second half of the 1988 All-Star Game here in Chicago. Great performances from these players, whether it's their first time participating or their 17th. Bro, we are destroying. I mean, this all-star game, every time it's literally... Yo, I need to get those rebounds, like, badly. All right, come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, we're getting closer. Okay, okay. Oh, did I, did I just make him freeze right there? Okay, I was saying... Talk to him, point at the crowd. Come on, Magic. This ain't your body, buddy. This ain't your body. You're boxed. You're boxed. Yo, what is that? Uh huh. Oh, yo, again? Again? Yo, MJ is too smooth with it. Oh my god, that crossover was nasty. Yo, he's not making that. Come on now. We getting more rebounds. We need our boards. We need our boards. That's box. That's box. One more. Let's get it. We got it. We got it. All right. 14 seconds left. We're up five. We did all the challenges. As long as we just win, which we're definitely going to. I don't know why they foul every time. All right. We're going to go ahead. Take this W right here. Yeah, they're still really trying to win. Like, God dang, the game is over, dude. Relax. We're moving on. That team on paper, and you go saw go. they were the stronger team and should have been favored, but you still got to go out and prove it. And they did exactly that. We gained so much scoring in that lineup for the East. My goodness, look at those names. That's that's always going to be tough to stop. And you factor in the raucous crowd cheering on Michael Jordan, Kevin. No wonder they found that extra gear they needed when it was time to get it done. That's a good point. This is Kevin Harlan saying thank you for watching. So long, everyone. So we end up beating the Western All-Stars. Michael Jordan, bro, 53 points. Now, we did shoot 24 for 42, but y'all got to realize, not every game I'm going to be shooting well. Like, this is Hall of Fame difficulty. The CPU do be going crazy. Elijah was going crazy, 24 and 9. Magic Johnson with 18. Carl Malone, 10, 6, and 3. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to challenge number 5. All right, challenge number five is the shot against Cleveland. So in this challenge, we have to juke Larry Nance correctly and the shot win the game. I don't know how this is going to work or the controls, but we're going to go ahead and jump in this challenge. It seems like this is like a quicker one and we're actually not going to have to play a full game. But uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. You know when Michael Jordan is coming to town, well, you always want it to get a good night sleep, a good night rest, something good to eat. Cause you know, the next day, Michael Jordan is in your building and he's coming to put on the show and you have to compete against that. Game five was at our place and you know, a typical game, Eastern Conference game, a physical game. It was like a, a back and forth thing, the shot. You know, everybody wanna talk about the shot. Chicago kept fighting, MJ kept making plays it's at the end of the game and we going to the timeout and everybody talking. I was like, Coach, I want to guard MJ. Like, I got to guard MJ. There's only one player that's getting this basketball and that's MJ. He's like, we're going to put Craig Elo on it. I'm like, and he jumped up and Elo jumps up. Elo stops and MJ does this to Elo. Elo comes down and he shoots it and and it was slow motion. It was like, uh, uh. <sighs> he's the guy that you want the ball in his hand late in the ball game, cause he gonna win most of those ball games by himself.
All right, Coach, Cleveland leads Chicago inbound. What can the Cavaliers do? The Cavs try to deny Jordan the ball. Oh, oh, with the steal! Goodness, the Bulls throw it. All right, look, I did not know the controls. I don't know what was going on there, bro. They, they didn't tell me what to do, okay? Let me, let me try again. All right, Coach, Cleveland leads Chicago inbound. What can the Cavaliers do? The Cavs try to deny Jordan the ball. They actually two-on-one him without the ball. Elo trying to catch back up. The shot's up. No, he misses. I love it. We're not talking about it, bro. We're not talking. We're running it back. we running it back. we not. Y'all didn't see nothing. Hey, Coach, Cleveland leads Chicago inbound. What can the Cavaliers do? The Cavs try to deny Jordan the ball. They actually two-on-one him without the ball. Elo trying to catch back up. The shot's up. It's good. Oh, Michael. Wow, Coach, a game five winning shot. Doug Collins off the bench, and the Bulls have won. You can never, ever count Michael Jordan out. I finally completed it. It was weird. Basically, you had to like spam A in the beginning and then like hover the left stick over the basket. Kind of confusing, but yeah, hopefully that helps you out if you are struggling on that one. But let's move on to challenge number six. Here it is, the sixth challenge shootout. Atlanta Hawks versus Chicago Bulls. This is going to be the matchup against Dominique Wilkins. This is definitely going to be a good one. We have to win the game, outscore Dominique, and score 40 points. This is going to be interesting, man. Michael was a different level, man. The different level of competitiveness, just sheer will to, to win. He changed the game. He changed the game. I mean, not just in one aspect, in many aspects, every aspect of the game. He changed it. I played against some greatest players in the history of this game. Michael Jordan was one of those guys that lifted my ability to the next level. We enjoyed the competition with one another. We played very hard and fiercely against one another, but it was, a, it was like you had two gentlemen going head to head. Michael Jordan and I wasn't just coming down the court getting dunks at the dunks. We found creative ways to score. I can't tell you the fun and the pleasure I had to play against him. You know, and Michael and I, we never really talked about those games. It was kind of an unspoken thing between us. You know, the respect level that we had was at a different level. I think I had a great game in Atlanta. And uh, I remember going to Chicago. Michael walks into our locker room. Now, we're still in suit and tie. We haven't gotten dressed yet. And he walks in our locker room, suit and tie. And I'm like, what, is, what are you doing coming in our locker room? And I ain't going to say exactly what I said. <laughs> and so he walked by me. He walked by Kevin Willis. And he got to Randy Whitman. He tapped him on his butt. And he said, lace him up. It's going to be a long. <laughs> he got 60 that night. <laughs> he got 60. And it was a very, it was a very close game. I think it went down to the last shot in that game, but uh, I think he proved his point. An unmistakable view of the Windy City, and a lot of anticipation in the air. Welcome, everyone, to Chicago. This is Kevin Harlan, along with me, Clark Kellogg. We've got David Aldridge joining us from the sideline as we get set to watch the Atlanta Hawks go up against the Chicago Bulls. Clark, this should be a beauty. You know, each of these teams, Kevin, has a guy who was in the running for the league lead in scoring. I'm, of course, talking about two guys that don't need introduction, Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins. Going to be a lot of fun watching these guys try to one-up each other offensively. In Clark, beyond just Jordan and Wilkins, plenty of other talented scorers on each of these teams as well. Kevin, you make a very good point. I mean, these are two impressive high-octane lineups, which I think could result in this score really getting run up in a hurry. This should be one to remember. And for Atlanta, Spud Webb at the point with Doc Rivers at the two. At the forward positions, Dominique Wilkins and Moses Malone. John Conkak will be at center. And starting things off for the Bulls, it's John Paxson at point guard with Michael Jordan also at the guard. <laughs> Then, Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant at the three and four. The veteran, Bill Cartwright, in the middle. Expectations are high for Jordan and Wilkins in this one. 
They're both exceptional scoring threats, and I know here we go. Tip off is here. What the? Not a third grader? All right, let's see if we can shoot that thing. Come on, MJ. Okay, big bodies. Yeah, that's looking cruise. Another thing we have to do is actually stop Dominique from scoring 20, and he greens right there. We really got to clamp him up. It's really Dominique versus Jordan this game. Oh my god, I'm, we bring in the dunk contest of the game. Oh no, not Dominique on the break. The human highlight film. How did he just make that? Come on, 2K. Wilkins has got six points. All right, Clark, Wilkins and Jordan. Okay, here we go, here we go. We really started got oh, oh oh my god hold on a second yo we really got to clamp yeah like we're just double teaming Wilkins because I'm already knowing he's about to go crazy this game oh my god MJ is hawking those lanes come on the fast break spin move oh, oh. uh huh look at who's guarding me bro like Spud Webb is guarding me this is literally disrespectful that's what oh, here we go come on we're just gonna double okay okay all right that's gonna be the half we have a lot of points but we gotta clamp dominique better and a close game so far through the first two quarters as we reach halftime Hawks on top leading by just one time now for the halftime break with the third quarter soon to follow right here on 2k sports so welcome back everyone oh yeah that is a horrible shot are you serious these cpus amaze me every game bro but look at i missed okay okay look at spud web look at little spud web trying to protect the paint oh my god oh my god the ai jordan just ripped dominique i was about to go double team him he cannot score anymore like we have to make sure he's boxed for the rest of this game because if he scores 20 that's gonna be trash bro all right, come on. Give it to MJ. Yes, sir. All the way. Oh, my God. On his head top. No doubt. One of the greatest dunkers of this era. By the way, this is an update. Dominic has 10 points, so we need to lock in. He can only score like nine more. All right, let's get it. Oh, yeah. Blow by. Blow by. Reverse dunk. Easy jam. We hanging on the rim, too. Talk to me nice. Oh, yeah. We about to get jiggy with it. We about to go crazy with it. Oh, my God. Where is he going? That's 40. Okay. Jordan with lock tank. Yo, the AI Jordan is actually a clamp god. Hey, oh my. Like, Doc Rivers is their point guard. Like, is this a joke? Where, well, what does he think this is? He ain't just gonna throw a lob at Dominique and expect... Like, come on. Yo, he was hawking that lane. Oh my god, I spoke too soon. He's not making... Can we get a re... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, Jordan. Come on, Jordan. Uh-huh. Little hezzy to the basket. Hey, come on. They cannot stop me. Like, they really disrespected me and put... Yo, why are they double... Yo, they're really doubling me like every play. Oh, no. No, no, no. We cannot have him be scoring. Get him. Get him. Get him. He just greened a heavily. Oh, no. Yo, he just got a foul. He's literally scoring too much, yo. We need to put a stop to this. He, he's going to green both of them. He's going to make both of them. He's going to have a 16 points. We cannot let him score more than two more baskets. Oh, yeah, MJ, come on. We got two and a half minutes. We're literally down one, too. Oh, my God. They're doubling. Get that, Bill. Let's go, Bill. Down one point. Come on. Double team, double team. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. He greened that. Dominique has 18 points. He literally can't score another basket or we lose the challenge. Easy bucket. Come on. We're down 1.55 seconds. Come on. Box him. He can't score again. We got Wilkins box. Rivers is not shooting. He's literally scared. He's not built for this. Dominique is not scoring the possession. Okay. Green. Okay. Down three. Come on, Jordan. Step back. Come on. Green. Let's go. We're built for this. He's not going to score. He's not going to score. 10 seconds. He's, oh no. He missed, he missed, he missed. Oh my God. Five, four. Come on, Jordan. Come on, Jordan. For the win. Green. Wait. It didn't count. We're going to overtime. Dominique still can't score anymore. All right. Three minute overtime. Doc Rivers just made a late. Okay. Let's go, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Come on, Wilkins. Come on, man. You can stop double teaming. Wilkins cannot score. I repeat, Wilkins cannot score. 
We need to lock in. Double team that. Double team it. We're here. We're here. I don't care if we give him an open dunk. Oh my god. He missed. He missed. He missed. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're up to. We gotta hold the ball. Oh no. Oh no. Shot clock, yo. Right. Double team. Come on, Paxson. Come on, Paxson. That's a clutch three. Paxson. Talk to him. They're fouling. Let's go. Up three points. 20 seconds left. We gotta make these free throws. Come on, that's green. That's green. Let's go. Come on. Jordan's locked in. You hear that? And he hits both free throws here. That's off. He's not making that. Let's go. Three seconds. Dominique under 20 points, and we win the game. Let's go. And the Chicago Bulls Clark managed to pull out the win here tonight with Michael Jordan delivering a terrific performance to overcome Wilkins and these Atlanta. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, Kevin, able to beat Dominique's offensive talents once again. Always special, though, to watch these two go at it head to head. MJ got the better of Dominique this time. He did tonight. But looking beyond just the two stars, Clark, as you like to say, this was a team win. Absolutely, Kevin. I mean, Jordan cleared and made the way, but the rest of the Bulls did a terrific job keeping up with him and putting a lot of pressure on this Hawk squad. Well done by the Bulls. Mm -hmm. This is Kevin Harlan saying thank you for tuning in. So long and good night, everyone. That was definitely one of the crazier, ga crazier games. I mean, MJ had 63, 5, 4, and 5, 26 for 44, and Wilkins was literally a basket away for making us lose this challenge. Anyways, on to challenge number seven. Okay, y'all, challenge number seven. We have to score 69 points against the Cavs. This is the second time we're playing the Cavs. Um, we have to shoot 50% or better and win the game. Oh, we got a show to put on tonight, don't we? Let's get it started. You think about the, the, the most complete basketball player, Michael Jordan was it. That year we went, we won 56, 57, 58 games. Good evening, everyone, along with Clark Kellogg and coach Mike Fratello and our reporter David Aldridge. This is Kevin Harlan. We've got a showdown in the Central Division. The Cleveland Cavaliers hosting the Chicago Bulls. And Mike, not a lot of welcoming faces from Michael Jordan in this arena tonight. And that's right, Kevin. Of course, MJ ended Cleveland's season last year in this building, a buzzer beater in game five of the first round. Opening night this season, Jordan poured in 50. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Brad Daughtery on the... Yo, he just destroyed my dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back to the bread and butter. Back to the basics. He can't stop it. Let's get it. Oh, my God. I thought he stole it. And why is there... You know Jordan's automatic at the free throw line. Come on, that's 10. Mm -hmm. Easy fade. Green. I'm, I'm too nice with Jordan at this point in the video, yo. Oh, yeah. Take over. The game's over. Hey! We're getting up there, man. 31 points. Oh, yeah. It's too sweet. Drop step. Hook shot. 41 points. Oh, it's the bro. The post spins are so OP, yo. I ain't gonna lie, he's taking his sweet ass time. Like, thank you, bro. Thank you, dude. He's Jordan rising to career levels for the first time since 1987. 61 points. Pass to Jordan. Over Elo. That ties it. Michael Jordan has equaled his career high. 63 points. An enormous tonight. He's out there just forcing it. Terrible mindset to have with the way he shot so far. Jordan. Unbelievable. Jordan. Jordan just notched 69 points. That's going to be it for this game. We got 69 exactly on the dot. 
And the Bulls with another win over Cleveland. That's Coach Chicago, Chicago is 4-0 against the Cavs this season. Folks, we like they've got one more meeting in two weeks to finish the season series. But guys, this is total domination by Chicago. And Clark, tonight, a Bulls win and a brutal loss for the Cavs in this playoff race. Definitely, Kevin. I mean, they're a full game out now. Still, Cleveland does have 13 games left, and the Bulls, they solidify their spot as the two seed. It appears they have. For Mike Fratello, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, and our entire 2K crew, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for tuning in. We'll see you next. This game was obviously a banger. 69 points, 10 rebounds. I mean, we did shoot 32 for 51. Like, 51 shots, 69 points. But, bro, it's Hall of Fame difficulty, okay? I don't want to hear it. At least we beat the challenge, and we're moving on to challenge number eight. Challenge number eight against the bad boy Pistons. This one could get pretty physical. Score 47 points, 10 rebounds, four assists. That's tough. Michael Jordan's flair, charisma, control, understanding the game. Nobody can't do that. He was so graceful with the basketball and uh, he would change gears on you and change the uh, direction really, really quick. It's, it's just amazing, man. If you see it, you know, in person, it's like, we're like, uh oh, you know, we start a fast break, uh-oh, somebody's gonna get dunked on, and it's gonna be Michael dunking on somebody. In the 1990 Eastern Conference Finals, I think the Bulls was really getting to figure us, us out. Joe Dumont used to guard him first because that's the beginning of the game. Then once he got out the game, I had to go guard him. You know, I don't think anybody else could have gotten John Salad, Rick Mahorn, Bill Lambeer, no. <laughs> Whenever he got the ball, I'm pretty much like nose to nose with him because I didn't want him to do anything to embarrass me. I'm gonna name the Jordan rule. If he goes to the hole, put him on the ground. If you see some of those clips, you'll see that we just hit them every time he goes to the basket. And he's always on the ground, you know, like in pain. But he always gets back up. He learned after a while, man, that he just started, he just took control from there. I think people really saw the, one of the best performances in the in, in NBA when Michael played against us. And we didn't let anyone do that against us. But I was put 50 on us quick. Check his resume out. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like, wow, this guy is amazing. The tallest building in the world, the Sears Tower, and the pride of Chicago, where we get ready for playoff basketball. Welcome, everyone, to the Eastern Conference Final. I'm Kevin Harlan with Coach Mike Fortello and Clark Kellogg. We have Game 3 between the Pistons and the Bulls. Mike, I hope you can hear me. This Chicago arena is rocking right now. Well, this city knows how pivotal this game is for the Bulls. It's a must-win situation for Chicago, and they'll need to be at their best to stand the chance. Oh, and that won't be easy. Michael Jordan and the Bulls, Clark, have so far been stifled by this great Piston D. Well, the Pistons are known as the bad boys, and for good reason. The defense is suffocating, it's physical, it's disruptive, and it's unrelenting. Chicago has to find some way to get their offense going in this series. As you always say, they hang their hats on their defensive play. That's right. Here now, a look at the starting five for the Pistons. It's Thomas and Dumars in the backcourt. Rodman and Lambeer, the fearsome frontcourt pair. And in the middle, James Edwards. Looking at the starting five for the Bulls. Paxson runs the point. Grant and Cartwright play in the post at the four and five. And on the wings, it's the dynamic duo of Jordan and Pippen. And the Pistons' defense, so physical. You know you'll get bumped and banged up against them. I'm right, not going to lie, so far in this game, I've been like, I'm going to start getting like the early stats. Like, okay, he just greened it heavily, but we need to get rebounds and assists early. Sir, Jordan, come on. Get a screen. Let's get a screen here, bro. We, we need to get some points here. Yes, sir. Hey, up on his head top. Oh, yeah, come on. Come on, come on, Oakley, set it. We need an assist. Actually, we don't need no assist. Green, top of the key. I come down, yeah. Let's get these points. 13 and five. Easy fadeaway. We need to get more assists because we only have zero, but we're good. 
Come on, IT. What's the word, bro? You box three seconds, two seconds. He green that? Oh, hell no. He's getting it done for Chicago. He put together quite a quarter, 13 points in all. And he looks to be planning for more. We'll return shortly. Welcome, everyone, back to Chicago. It's the Bulls and Pistons in an Eastern Conference final showdown. It has been a close game this entire game so far. We have a this is our biggest lead of the game though. We're up five. I have no assists, but I'm working on the rebounds right now. He greened it again. Oh yeah. He's not making that. That's a free board. Yo, Lambeer. And he made it. That's box. Get the board. Let's go. We got our rebounds. Now we just need our assists and points. And we're down one. Like, I don't know. This team's defense is just look at their defense is good, I'm telling you. Oh yeah. Give me that. Give me that. Let's go. We need this bucket. He's too small. I, I guess not. I guess not. Box, come on. Give me that. Let's go. Look at this defense. Yo, give it to Jordan. Easy dunk. We need this dunk, too. Come on. That's 31 points. No assist, though. We are destroying them now, by the way. Oh, my. Yo, he, look, he got me with that. We're here, though. Can we get a board, though? Can we get a board, though? Like, come on. Yeah, Jordan. Give it to Cartwright. Easy assist. Yo, Cartwright, what are you doing? We'll take the points, but Cartwright, yo. Easy bucket. Come on. That's 44 points. We need three more points. Right, we need assist badly. Like, we only have two assists, and there's a minute left. Give it to Grant. Come on. One more assist. One more basket. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on, Jordan. Come on, Jordan. We need this bucket right here. He missed 28 seconds. I need to score here. Like, I have to score. There's 17 seconds. Come on. Green, let's go. I just need an assist. I need an assist. 15 seconds. Oh, my God. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, my God. Five, four, three. I, I had to call. I panicked. I panicked. I had to call a timeout. There was no one, like, I wouldn't have had enough time, bro. They were. That would have been, like, a half-court shot. I literally, he has to be, in, oh, my God. Michael Jordan's inbounding. Oh, my God. We're giving it to Armstrong. He's the best shooter. He's the best shooter. Oh my God. Where, where's the name of it? Here's Armstrong. Green! Let's go! Let's freaking go, dude! Yes! Yes! I needed that. I can again. They needed to win so badly. Michael Jordan and the Bulls get the win. What a tremendous effort from Chicago. Series now moves to 2 1. And the Bulls are very much in it. This team showed a lot of metal fighting for the looks they got converted when they needed to. And for the Pistons, Clark, they'll be feeling the pressure in Game 4 for sure. As they should. They don't want to let this series get tied up. Nobody wants to deal with the three-game series against Michael Jordan. I'd expect them to bring it for Game 4. I would, too. For Mike Fratello, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, and our entire 2K crew, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for tuning in. See you next time. I am actually really excited. I did not have to replay that challenge again. Jordan, 48, 18, 4, and 2. We didn't shoot too well, but I don't care, dude. That came down to the wire. It is now time to win our first NBA Finals with challenge number nine, start of a dynasty, score 30 points, get 10 assists, grab four rebounds. Let's do it. Michael Jordan was royalty. He was Elvis Presley. He was the Beatles. It was Michael Jordan versus the NBA. He was that good and he had a charisma that was unique to him, but also that killer instinct of wanting to win. When Michael Jordan came into town, the Great Western Forum became the place to be. You couldn't live your life if you didn't get a chance to see Michael Jordan perform in person. When the, the Lakers and the Bulls faced each other in that 1991 finals, it was 
that moment where you could really say sports and entertainment were coming together. When the Bulls won that series, you know, right there you saw like kind of the passing of the torch. You know, what Michael did and what Michael accomplished and represented in the 90s inspired the next generation of talent. Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. The backdrop of the NBA Finals after yet another beautiful day here in Southern California. One of the storylines today, two of the Lakers starters, James Worthy and Byron Scott, injured and unable to play. Hi everyone, welcome to sunny Los Angeles for Game 5 of the 1991 NBA Finals. Chicago with the commanding 3-1 lead. With coach Mike Fratello and Clark Kellogg and David Aldridge on the sideline, this is Kevin Harlan. Mike Fratello, Michael Jordan and the Bulls, one game away from their first title. Kev, Chicago has won the last three games of the series. The Bulls have all the momentum. They have a speed and quickness advantage. Michael can taste that first title. And for the Lakers, their backs against the wall and without two of their starters. Those two guys are Byron Scott and James Worthy, Kevin, both out tonight. A devastating blow for the Lakers. So Magic Johnson will have to take on more of a load, figure out a way to ignite a stagnant, depleted Lakers offense. That is a gigantic challenge. And now we'll look at the Chicago Bulls. The MVP, Michael Jordan, is in the backcourt, joined by sharpshooting John Paxson. Chicago's defensive stopper, Scottie Pippen, is in the small forward. Horace Grant is at the four. And the experienced veteran, Bill Cartwright, is at the center. And for the Lakers, Magic Johnson runs showtime. Terry Teagle and A.C. Green are in the lineup, both injury replacements. Sam Perkins at the four can really shoot it. Uh, it's time to lock in. We can't play no games. I mean, we are playing a game, but you know what I'm saying. Like, we got to get our first ring on our hands. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and lock up Magic Johnson, and let's complete this challenge and win this game. He's okay. He missed that. But he grains that. Okay, let's go. We need this assist. Come on, Pippen. Come on, Pippen. It's time. Okay. Get the board maybe next time. And it's an and one. This is not looking good. Let's go. Come on, MJ. Easy dunk. Come on. We cannot be. We've been losing like this whole game. That's box. He's not making that. Yo, they're greening threes. We're here. We're here. We're literally down five, y'all. We need to get a little comeback going. Yo, magic with the lay? Jump ball is crazy. Give me that. Come on. Fast break. Fast break. We need this. Ooh, another scoop layup. Yo. He made that, dude. Points come inside. And a close game so far through the first two quarters as we reach halftime. Los Angeles on top, leading by five. And join us right back here after the break for the start of the second half. The sun is setting over Los Angeles and maybe the NBA season. This is game five of the 1991 NBA final. Second half here from Inglewood. The Lakers looking to extend the series. Chicago wants it to end. Come on. Magic not making no three. He is bugging. Yo, he's going for swag because they're up five. We just got a rebound goal. Let's go. Need that assist. Need that assist. Let's go, Horace Grant. Two more assists. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're here. Yup. We need this assist. We need this assist. Come on, Paxson. Hit it for me. Hit it for me, Paxson. All we need is this assist. Come on, Cartwright. Let's go. Don't let me down. Let's get it. We got to win the game now. Down one. Let's go. He missed. Yo, yo, we need a bucket. Two minutes and 45 seconds. Jordan. Yes. Cartwright. Clutch. All right. We're up one. Jordan. Oh, my God. Jordan. Let's go. Give it to Cartwright. Cartwright is going crazy. We're here. We are here. That is box. That travel, travel, travel. And he makes a heavily. Got the lead. He is not making that. Free board. Give it to Jordan. Give it to Jordan. 
They're fouling. They're fouling. Y'all know me and MJ at the free throw line. It's straight buckets. We not missing either of these. 24 seconds. We need this three-point lead. Let's get it. No threes. Come on. No threes. No threes. No threes. No threes. No threes. No. Yes. It's over. We're going to win. We're going to win. Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have done it. For the first time, Mike Fratello, the Bulls are world champions. Michael Jordan has answered the doubters. He can lead a team to a title. This has to be extra sweet for Michael. And for the Bulls, Clark Kellogg, this is a long time coming. Tremendous job by this entire organization. Our first NBA championship. Hey, Magic went crazy, 27-6-9. But Jordan, 42-6-12, 16-26. Hey, man, a goat on the way. Challenge number 10 is the shrug game. This is going to be fun for sure. We have not hit that many three-pointers this video, and we have to hit six in the first half? Oh my gosh, this is going to be a tough one. When Michael Jordan played in Chicago, the crowd just went crazy to another decibel level. And I, I get the chills every time. He played with such a, a fury. He was electric on the court. Well, before the shrug game, the game against Portland in the NBA Finals, well, the public relations people couldn't find Michael. The reason was he was on the court taking three-point shots, and he was not noted as a three-point shooter. We asked him about it. He said, well, you know, you never know when a three-point shot might come in handy. Obviously, he had figured something out that he was going to surprise them. But you have to hit the shots. This incredible onslaught of threes takes place in the first half. And he hits six of them. That was unheard of at that time for anyone. He looks over at our broadcast table and gives that shrug. And I think what I took out of that most it showed his humility that he could not believe that he hit six three-pointers. That was, I thought, one of the uh, uh, incredible moments in playoff history. I would have to go with Jordan as the GOAT. Playing in the NBA Finals, motivation is a given. But if bulletin board material carries weight, the Blazers have plenty. The defending champion Bulls have added their voices to a chorus casting Portland as a paper tiger with talent to burn, but unable to stick to a winning script. Now, can the Blazers shred that narrative and write their own championship chapter? One of the many wonderful sights to see in Chicago, the fountain of the Great Lakes in Grant Park. Now it's time to hear the starting lineup from tonight's PA announcer, Ray Quay.
Kevin Hart and Mike, a Blazers team that some have questioned. What is their mentality? Well, they've made it clear. They're out to prove a point that they're ready for this moment and that they can deliver in the clutch. And the two leading stars for these teams. Clark, it's Clyde Drexler and Michael Jordan. Their games invite comparison, I think. They sure do, Kevin. A lot of similarities when you look at them, from their age to the versatility and athleticism of their games. Air Jordan and Clyde the Glide, both cleared for takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> On the floor for Portland, it'll be Terry Porter and Clyde Trexor in the backcourt. Up front, Jerome Kersey is at small forward. Buck Williams at the four. Handling the low post is Kevin Duckworth. For the Bulls, Bill Cartwright is at the center. Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant man the front court. And Paxson is at the point. And of course, at off guard, it'll be Michael Jordan. And the Blazers certainly motivated to answer their detractors. That's a question they know. Right, so I'm just going to be chucking. I ain't going to lie. So let's just step back. Okay, 0 for 1. Come on. And I'm, and I'm literally hurt. Like, what's going on here, yo? They're literally setting me up out here. That's got to be green. That's got to be green. That's green, man. That's one three-pointer. All right, we out here. Come on. Give me a big body. Give me a... Oh, that's a good body. I missed that. I don't want to shoot that. Come on, back. Oh, no. That's... Oh, that was... Come on, Jordan. Come on. I should have shot it. I should have shot it. I'm scared. I'm literally getting scared. I'm shooting this one. I'm shooting this one. Oh, that's green, too. It's not even a three. I I need to get some threes in, bro. Like, the first quarter is almost... What am I doing? What am I actually doing? I'm not even shooting threes. Give me this step back, bro. Come on. Hit it. Oh, my God. He jumped at me. Let's go. Let's Yo, I'm shooting some crazy shots. I'm just chucking at this point. I'm literally cold. Come on. That's got to go in. Green, baby. All right, come on. We got like three three-pointers right now. That's four. Four three-pointers. Come on, we need another three. We need another three. That's a midi. What am I doing? What am I doing? Let's go, Jordan. Let's go, Jordan. Come on. That's it. That's five threes. That's five threes. We need one more three. One more three. Come on. I got it. I got it. Come on. This is free. This is free. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's got to be green. Full bar. Let's go. He shrugged. He did the shrug. Yo, Jordan did the shrug. That was his sixth three-pointer in this game. So timeout call here. The first. All right, we are down one. One minute left in the fourth. We just need to win the game. Drexler has like no points. Come on, Cartwright. That's a. Oh my God. Why did he give that an animation to him? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, Pippin. Yes, Pippin. Yo, Pippin finally gets a steal. We're holding this. We're holding this as long as we can. All right, five. Come on. He's gonna bucket Jordan through the contact. Let's go. We're up three. Don't give up a three. 30 seconds left. They called a timeout. Yeah, they nervous. No threes, no threes. What are they doing? Oh no. What is he doing? That's gotta be a ball game. Up three. 10 seconds. No threes. No threes. He's not making that. Nope. That's over. It's over. Ring number two is here. So they to fall. And with this victory, the Bulls stand just three wins away. Mike Vitello from their second consecutive title. And it looks like they are determined to make that happen. Michael Jordan's got one finger on the trophy already. And you know the Chicago crowd will be ready for it for game two. This building will be rocking. No question about it, Kevin. It will be a great atmosphere, but don't count the Blazers out now. There are still three games ahead in Portland. And that building has its own set of problems for the opposition. Well, you played there. No one should know better than you. Yeah, it's a tough spot. Great fans, but they're hard on the opponents. For our reporter, David Aldridge, along with Clark Kellogg and Mike Fratello, this is Kevin Harlan. Thank you for watching tonight's game. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening. We got our second ring. MJ with 52, 5, 3, and 2. I shot really bad that game. I mean, we're talking 8 for 20 from 3. That is crazy.
challenge number 11, and we are going against the New York Knicks. We are back from playing baseball. We're going to be wearing number 45, and we got to drop 55 in Madison Square Garden. It's going to be a great game, that's for sure. Michael changed the game because his, he didn't try to do what the things that he did. He would drive down, dunk on people with their tongue wagging and all that stuff. What he became, the evolution, um, I mean, it was like, wow. When you have a guy with the, the kind of notoriety, the kind of popularity that Michael has, it is good for the whole, the whole entire league. You know, y'all keep calling it the, the, the double nickel game. <laughs> he dropped 55 and you know he made a move to get to the free throw line and I thought he was going up for the for the shot and I go to try to block the shot he dishes it off to Bill Winnington he dunks it that game was the coming out party uh, for for him you know he showed uh, the league uh, the world that he was still great and he went on to win three more championships According to him, he retired for two years to give the rest of us an opportunity to try to win, win, a, win a title. And, and, and according to him, I didn't take advantage of it. So he had to come back to, to show the world that he's the man. <laughs> New York City is our setting for today's contest. And there's been no shortage of buzz in the streets leading up to this game. Welcome, Welcome everyone. I'm Kevin Harlan, joined by Coach Mike Fratello and Clark Kellum. David Aldridge will join us from the sideline moments from now. Since Michael Jordan's return, the Bulls have a 2-2 two two record. And Mike, now they take on the challenge of facing the New York Knicks here in New York City. Kev, lots of people wondering if MJ is back to 100%. You look at his stat line as of late, He's just below his career averages. After only four games, Clark, it's probably fair to say Jordan is still getting up to speed. And getting back into shape too, Kevin. Yes. You can't get your legs back overnight, particularly when the games are coming as fast as they are. You don't get a lot of practice or conditioning time. But as he gets into the swing of things, there's no question his numbers will come back too. Boy, but this game could ignite him. Going over the starting lineups for the Bulls, it's B.J. Armstrong at the point. Then the dynamic duo of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Then it's Tony Kukoc at the four. Down low, they've got Will Perdue. For the Knicks, they'll start off with Derek Harper and John Starks in the backcourt. With Anthony Bonner and Charles Oakley at the three and four. And at center, Patrick Ewing. Here we go. It's going to be interesting to see how Jordan takes on this Knicks team. We got to start off right, you know what I'm saying? We've been away from the game a little bit. Look at Patrick Ewing. Come on, easy free throws. They already fouling me and hacking me. As soon as I get back on the court, what is it, my third game back in the league? All right, Jordan, come on. We starting off slow, but that's okay. We getting back into the rhythm of things. Uh-huh. Yeah, you better throw the double. The, oh, the drop steps are nice, sir. Oh, he's leaving me. He's leaving me open. That's green. Hand down, man down. Uh-huh. Yup. That right fadeaway was the sweet spot right there. Look at Ewing, bro. Look at Ewing. Yo, we have matched up against Ewing so many different times in this video. What was it? The, the Georgetown game. The USA game. Now we're playing him in the NBA. Uh-huh. Oh, Stark's got nothing. Stark's got nothing on me. Let's go, Jordan. Come on. We're going for 50 right here. We're going for 50. Easy dunk. They're making it too easy. Uh-huh. Give me that screen. This is for the goal. And that's 55. Challenge complete. We just got to win. Are they hacking me. 34 seconds left. I gotta lie, we got this game in the bag. We're definitely moving on to challenge number 12. We, we still own Madison Square Garden. Sadly, Knicks fans. Missed. And so might the Bulls come out a winner here tonight. A big victory for them against the Knicks. And the triumphant return to New York City for Michael Jordan. Just a regular season contest. But having MJ back in the building certainly made this one feel special. Clark, do you think this registers as an especially tough loss for the Knicks? 
No question about it, Kevin. Always hard to lose a game at home, but you got to put it behind you. I know they're thinking ahead, and they'll look to handle business next time out. Yeah, they think they're going to rebound, I'm sure. And so for Mike Fragello, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan alongside our entire 2K Sports crew thanking you for watching. So long and good night, everyone. We were in our Duffy that game. Literally dropped 55-plus points with Jordan. Stark shot 0 for 8. He was terrible. We shot 24 for 47 with 59. Big W. Challenge number 12, the Father's Day victory against the Seattle Supersonics. Let's get it. When you win six championships and win MVPs and, and win scoring titles, you have to be considered one of the best. Michael Jordan had that and more. Going into the 1996 series against the Chicago Bulls, I was a defensive player of the year. Michael was the, the, the MVP and they had made a big deal about it. But I think my mindset was, is just to go in there and, and contain him. Make him take uncomfortable shots. Make him take something that's not in his rhythm and give us a chance to win. And make other players beat us. Kuko stepped up, Pippen stepped up. A lot of players stepped up. Michael Jordan stepped up in game six. He got smart about it by attacking us and getting us in, in situations where we're getting in foul trouble and then we couldn't do nothing about it. In these games, I was saying anything I wanted to say to Mike. And it, it went back and forth, and he didn't back down. He was always strong, and he always came at me. And I loved it. I think he's one of the greatest basketball players to ever play the game. It had been deemed impossible. No team has ever returned from a 3-0 series deficit. But the Sonics have marched back from the brink and now stand poised to take it the distance. And tonight, as they approach the final leg, it's their opponent Bulls who seem wounded and weary. Once given up for lost, can they find their way to the promised land? Across town from the United Center, downtown Chicago. Now it's time. blessing great to enjoy more of the championship round but they might have preferred to see this series wrap up back in seattle 
And the once unbeatable Bulls suddenly seeming very vulnerable. Clark wrecked by injuries and inconsistent play from their supporting cast. A lot falling on the shoulders of Michael Jordan. You're right, Kevin, and Michael Jordan is facing double and triple teams, not to mention the reigning defensive player of the year in Gary Payton. MJ definitely is looking for more help, but he also knows he might have to do it himself. That is going to be a battle to watch for sure. On the floor for the Supersonics, the defensive player of the year, Gary Payton. He's joined by Hawkins in the backcourt. At the forward spots, Shrimp and Kemp. And Brakowski at the five. And the five for Chicago. MVP Michael Jordan and Harper are the guards. Pippen and Rodman form the front court, And big Luke Longley at center. And after the Sonics lost the first three games, Coach Paul finally put the glove, Gary Payton, on Jordan. We're going to have to finish with 22, 9, and 7 in this game and win so we can hopefully win this NBA Finals. Look at this. Oh, my God. They hack me. And one? Are we like that off the rip? Okay, Jordan. Is it time to get the fourth ring? Look at Sean Kemp. Uh, he pussied out. He could have dunked on me. Go, Jordan. Yes, sir. The reverse dunks, man. They are feeding Sean Kemp right now. He is too. He's a big body, bro. I'm telling you. Right, we need an assist. Where's Jordan? Come on. Come on, Pippen. Go, Pippen. Go, Pippen. Go, Pippen. And one. Where's the foul? Okay. Come on. We got to take over. MJ. Oh, where are you going, Hawkins? Where are you going, Hawkins? That's green. Six seconds. We're looking pretty good going into the half. I'm feeling confident. The stats looking good. The game's looking easy. I I think we got this. And so that brings the first half to a close. Bulls lead by eight. Step away briefly, but get you right back out here for the start of the third quarter after our halftime. The lights are lit in Chicago and a beautiful 65 degrees outside on what has been a beautiful and unusually mild June day. Game six of the NBA final. It's the second half along with coach Mike Fratello, former player Clark Kellogg, and reporter David Aldridge. This is Kevin Harlan. The Bulls hoping to hoist the Larry O'Brien trophy tonight. They got team takeover, yo. Gary Payton's hurt. Out to Hawkins. Oh, he's making that. He missed. Free board. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Luke Longley. Yup. Easy, easy pick and slip. Let's go. All right, come on, Jordan. Oh, he's, he's sagging. He's sagging on Jordan, the GOAT. Sean Kemp. A foul. Oh, nah. You got to be kidding. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, what is he? What are they doing? All right, come on. We are destroying them. We just need a couple more stats. Jordan all the way. Easy jam. And this is over. Our fourth ring for the GOAT. Outside, Perkin. And the Chicago Bulls have done it. 72 wins in the NBA championship. The greatest season in NBA history. To win it all in front of their home fans, it makes this special. This team has gone through so much. Clark, this win solidifies this Bulls team's place in NBA history, don't you think? I agree, and I think they very well could be the best team ever. Maybe the best we've ever seen, this 96 Bulls team. And Michael Jordan, his fourth title. MJ is in the conversation for greatest player of all time. Jordan, Pippen, Rodman, all future Hall of Famers. Boy, if a picture is worth a thousand words, what more can you say? And you can just see the emotion and what this moment means to Michael Jordan. Congratulations to the Chicago Bulls 1996 NBA champion. Well, that's caps off our 72 win season. Literally dropped 46 points. Went absolutely crazy this game. Sean Kemp was going crazy to a 28-9, but it's not enough to take the down the best team of all time. Challenge number 13, the flu game. 
Yo, our stats are probably going to be down this game because I think it's actually going to show in game that we have flu-like sy symptoms, whatever it is. Score 38 points, grab some rebounds, get five assists. We are going to do it. We got to win this game. You know, I feel fortunate to have been covering the Bulls at that time and being so close to watch this transformation of this young man just becoming the greatest basketball player that's ever played. Nothing could ever stop him from winning. It was all about winning. The flu game, they called it. It could have been the pizza game because he thought he had, it was food poisoning and he looks horrible. He could barely talk, you know, and I didn't want to keep asking about how you feel, this and that and the other. I could just see it in his eyes. I think he realized the situation. You have an opportunity to win a championship and it can go away. We're not gonna wait till you get better and then play the next week. The thing that always brought the greatness out in him was a challenge. And he was just zoned in. And there was nothing that was gonna stop him from playing his best and winning that basketball game. A gorgeous summer night here in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the sun sets on the Wasatch Mountains. We now go over to Dan Roberts, the PA announcer for tonight's game. Good evening, fans, and welcome to the Delta Center for game number five of the NBA Finals with the Chicago Bulls and our Utah Jets. And now, introducing the starting lineup for the Chicago Bulls. Wearing number 13, the starting center at 7 2 from New Mexico, Luke Longley. On the guard line, number 9, at 6 6 from Miami of Ohio, Ron Parker. Wearing number 33, starting forward at 6 7 from Central Arkansas, Scotty Pippen. Wearing number 91, starting forward at 6 7 from Southeastern Oklahoma State, Dennis Rodman. And at guard number 23, at 6 6 from North Carolina, Michael Jordan. The Bulls are coached by Phil Jackson. hoping to rebound for what was a subpar performance by his standards in game four. And that might be tough. We're getting a report, Clark, that Jordan is battling a severe illness tonight. We didn't know about it until right now. Certainly not something the Bulls wanted to hear or see. As down as John Stockton has been in the past two ball games, Chicago's stars need to match his play. If MJ is less than 100%, a lot of that load then falls on Scottie Pippen. You're right, he's going to have to step up. 
So to four for the Bulls, it'll be Ron Harper and Michael Jordan in the backcourt. Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman man the forward spots. And it's center, Luke Longley. For the Jazz, John Stockton will be at the point with Jeff Hornacek at the two. In the front court, we have Brian Russell, Carl Malone in the center, Greg Ostertag. And guys, I think it's already safe to say Jordan does not have his usual energy tonight. All right, so looking at it, it actually does show right here that I have the flu when it comes to current injuries. Sideline reporter David Aldridge. Thanks very much. There is news on Michael Jordan. He woke up at 3 a.m. this morning with flu-like symptoms. He had a bad headache, he was sick to his stomach, and couldn't get back to sleep. He stayed in bed most of the day. He missed shoot-around and really didn't do any of his usual pregame routine. All right, let's get it going. Oh, did we just get broke by stock? Yo. Nah, bro, the Jazz are looking devious. We need this assist. Pippen with the and one. That's exactly what we need, Pippen. We need him to step up this game with assist. I need assist to get to him. I need boards for MJ. I need points. I need oh. Come on, MJ. Come on, MJ. Oh, the post spin. Easy lay. He ain't going for a dunk. Let's go. Like, and one for Foster. Like, who? Why? Oh, my God. Look at the pass. Rodman. Mm-hmm. Malone's not making that over Longley. Okay, maybe he is. Hook shot of death. Just a little over 90 seconds right here. Gone in the quarter. The Greg Oster tag. He greened that. We're here. Stockton is doubled. And he still makes it. Yes, MJ. Yes, MJ. Nah, no, I'm not making that. There's no way. Okay, we're going to the fourth. I'm feeling confident with a 10 point lead. We should be good to go. MJ may be sick. All right, let's lock in. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Over those, Stockton. Look at me. We've completed most of our goals. I think actually all of our goals. So we're locked. Minute 27. Oh, my God. Why are they sagging on MJ? 17 seconds away from getting our third win in this series. And we are now going to be one game away from winning another NBA Finals. Yo, that flu game was crazy. And now, Mike, the Bulls just one win away from their second straight NBA title. And you have to think this series is theirs for the taking. I don't think Utah can go into Chicago and win two straight. It'll be a tough task, Clark, to say the least. Assuming Michael Jordan is back at full strength, Kevin, it very well could be an impossible task. <laughs> well said. Clark Kellogg, Mike Fratello, and David Aldridge, and the rest of our 2K team, this is Kevin Harlan signing off. We'll see you next time. We definitely were locked in that game. Carl Malone had a good game, but Jordan, bro, we had 47 points, 21 for 35. The 14th challenge. Passing the torch to Kobe. Michael Jordan's first matchup against Kobe. Shaq is not playing. Pippen's not playing. And all we got to do is score 35 and clamp up Kobe. Let's get it. Michael Jordan is the greatest player ever. Just watching him play, he had tenacity. He had focus. He had drive. He had vision. And Kobe emulated his game out the mic. He did everything Mike did to walk like him, talk like him. He did everything. He loved Mike. So, you know, the ability to, to go against him that day, just him versus Mike, he lived for stuff like that. So I remember that game. You know, he just was, he wasn't calling no plays. And every time Mike scored, he knew he had to score. Whatever Mike was doing, he had to do it or outdo him. That's what you do when you go up against a great player, AKA your idol. You gotta let them know that you're coming to take their spot.
NBA superstars are judged by their championships. In 1991, Michael Jordan and the Bulls secured their first, knocking off Magic Johnson and the Lakers. To some, a passing of the torch from one great dynasty to another. But now, a new challenge emerges from Los Angeles. A young Lakers team who tonight will lean on their high-flying youngster, Kobe Bryant. A hazy winter day as we fly over downtown Chicago. Down below, the buzz is stirring in the United Center. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we expect a pack house for this matchup between the Los Angeles Lakers and the hometown Chicago Bulls. With Mike Fratello, Clark Kellogg, and our sideline reporter, David Aldridge, I'm Kevin Harlan. Mike, this could potentially be a preview of the NBA Finals. Kevin, coming off two straight titles, the Bulls have to be considered we go. the favorites in the East. They've weathered injuries, most notably the absence of Scottie Pippen. All right, we, we attack it immediately, getting fouled. Kobe actually isn't even a starter for this game, uh, so I don't know when they're going to sub him in here. Let's get it, big grains. Oh, they're subbing him in right now, 28 seconds into the game. Okay, another grain. Let's get it. Oh, we attacking you, Kobe. We attacking you. That's baby food, Kobe. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're boxed. What are you shooting? What are you shooting, Kobe? Oh, my God. You are boxed. That's a free dunk, too. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to teach him the moves. We got to teach him the fadeaway. The signature. Easy and one. This is getting too easy out here, LA. Yeah, we really beat them in, what, the 1991 finals. Now they got Kobe. And we just shooting over those. Let's go. Come on. We only up three. Oh, oh no. Is this going to be Kobe's first bucket? It is. Oh, my gosh. All right, come on. He's boxed. What is he even doing with the ball? Like, come on, Kobe. I'm not doing that on the MJ. This the goat we talking about. Let me show you how to do it. And that's it for the first half of action. What's been a very close game here. Lakers on top, leading by five. And we'll be back right after halftime for the start of the third quarter. We'll see you in a bit. The bright lights of Chicago on a mild December evening. About 41 degrees side, but action inside is heating up. Welcome back, everyone. We've got a fun matchup between the Chicago Bulls and the visiting Los Angeles Lakers. See, they don't even got Kobe in the game anymore. I mean, like, hey, I don't know. Yep, that's a steal. Come on, Rodman. Up to Jordan over Kobe. Oh, he fouled. Yeah, don't argue that was a pretty obvious personal foul. First team foul. Half the line for your goal. Michael Jordan. Shooting team. on the first and that will put them up by nine. And so Jordan nails both of them. Easy win against the Lakers. And so it's the Chicago Bulls getting the win in front of their home crowd. An important victory coach for them here against the up-and-coming LA Lakers. Well, Michael gets the best of Kobe while the Bulls capture their third straight win. And they need it as they're trying to move up in the standings in this cut. MJ had 56, 22 for 41 against Kobe. Kobe had 6, 8 points. Bro, that's bad.
We are finally on the last challenge, and we are on the last dance. Game six of the NBA Finals for the sixth ring. Let's get it. Stars make every player on the team better. Michael Jordan, his ability to challenge himself, his natural ability physically of being able to play with such great energy. His intelligence, basketball intelligence, all those things I think were remarkable. I enjoyed coaching Michael Jordan because he had a respect for coaches and he had a desire to play at a peak level and he's willing to follow instructions without uh, you know, wanting to over dominate the game. Even as a young player, there were times in the fourth quarter where he would make up the difference in a ball game on his own. I had to bring Michael in my office and say, Michael, when's the last time someone who led the league in scoring won a championship? Thought about it a bit, he said, Rick Barry. I said, yeah, that's right, in the 70s. But it's very rare that person that wins a scoring championship is also on a championship team. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna move the ball around and we're gonna take the spotlight off you all the time and involve the other players on your team. He said, oh, you're gonna have that equal opportunity offense. Well, what's gonna happen when the 24 second clock gets under five seconds? We'll coach the players how to get the ball to you in that particular time so you can activate the ball. Save that terrific scoring ability for the fourth quarter. He laughed and he accepted the, the uh, responsibility. And the other thing that we did is we moved him from a guard to a forward position. We really wanted to win the series in Chicago, game five, and we lost this game and we flew out to Utah to play the sixth game and Michael said, we're gonna end it tonight. You guys get ready for this ball game because we're not going seven. Going into the game, we kind of knew what we had to do to win the game. You had to play close, but come out and win the game in the last five minutes. The timeout that I did take uh, with about 40 some seconds to go. That was the key because knowing Jerry Sloan and having coached against him many times, I knew that if we could go down and score and make it a, a one possession game, that he wouldn't call a timeout. We'll run the open. Dennis will you know, run a pick or set a pick or slip a pick, depending upon what Oyster Tag does. And Michael, you can double back on Malone if you have the ability. You saw the crowd rise Behind that whole activity, you could see the, the anticipation that they had that this was a crucial moment. Michael changed the, the idea and pulled up for the jumper instead of taking it to the hoop and uh, finished it. We called that season the last dance and I thought, you know, for an ending of a career, there could have been nothing sweeter than what Michael had just done. Quickly. Do we do last time? Take a shot. What time is it? Game time! Oh. Every great plot has its twists. Game five of the NBA Finals was no exception. In fact, it may have shifted the momentum in this series. Michael Jordan was hitting the back of the rim all night. Meanwhile, Paul Malone finally found his rhythm. 39 points. And he had help, most notably from an unlikely source forward Antoine Carr. Called upon in the second half, Carr had five attempts from the field, he made all five. Chicago couldn't close it out at home, so we're back in Utah for game six, coming up next. Dusk here in Salt Lake City, Utah, as we get ready for tonight's big game. We now go over to Dan Roberts, the PA announcer for tonight's game. Good evening, fans, and welcome to the Donut Center for game number six of the NBA Finals with the Chicago Bulls and our Utah Jazz. And now, introducing the starting lineup for the Chicago Bulls. Wearing number 13, the starting center at 7 2 from New Mexico, Luke Longley. On the guard line, number nine, at 6'6", six, six, from Miami of Ohio, Rob Harper. 
wearing number seven, starting forward at 6'11 from Croatia, Tony Kukoc. Wearing number 33, starting forward at 6'7 from Central Arkansas, Scotty Pippen. Anacar, number 23 at 6'6 from North Carolina, Michael Jordan. The Bulls are coached by Phil Jackson. And now, introducing the Scottish... Salt Lake City, Utah, for Game 6 of the NBA Finals between the Chicago Bulls and the Utah Jazz. Alongside Clark Kellogg and Mike Fratello and our sideline reporter David Aldridge, I'm Kevin Harley. Coach, the Jazz need to win two in a row, but these rabid fans trying to will them to the finish line. And if they win tonight, Kevin, Game 7 would also be here on their home court. So this crowd could have a decided impact on the final outcome. And in the first two games here in Salt Lake City, Clark, Jordan and Pippen, who coach also, combining to go four for 23 from three. And it's unheard of. It really is, Kevin. And the Jazz, with a bit more size and strength inside, it sure would help Chicago if they can space the floor a little better tonight and knock down some of those perimeter shots. On the floor for the Chicago Bulls, Luke Longley is at the five. The forwards, Scottie Pippen and Tony. And at the guard positions, Ron Harper and the great Michael Jordan. And so for the Utah Jazz, it's Adam Keefe and Carl Malone inside. Brian Russell at the three and also tasked with defending Michael Jordan. And the skilled backcourt of Jeff Hornacek and John Stockton. When you look at how the Bulls have played on the road this postseason, all right, so we're going to have to lock in this game. Look at Jordan moving, though. I mean, we're... Oh, my gosh. I mean, we're max overall. We may as well be 100 overall. We're at the end. Of the, we're in the prime still. We're trying to get this sixth ring. Overdose. Okay, Longley. Good board. Let's get it. Let's get it moving. Come on. We only up two here. Oh, yeah. All the way to the basket. Reverse dunk never fails. Okay, we got to take over. Yup, easy dunk, too easy. We'll take this free throw to go into halftime. Up two points. Not too shabby. And so it's Michael Jordan making things happen for the ball. What an amazing quarter. There was absolutely no stopping him. Back to the action in just a minute. Welcome back to the second half of Game 6 in the NBA Finals here in Salt Lake City, Utah. The Jazz trying to force a Game 7 against the defending champion Chicago Bulls in front of these tremendous fans. I, uh, we're up three. Look at that spin move. I'm telling you, the Michael Jordan post moves. Carl Malone is dogging down there, man. He's got 20. Let's go. Look, I told you, I am destroying dudes. We're going to continue to abuse. Oh. Luke Longley got it, though. Easy dunk. Come on. Oh, no. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Oh, no. He has takeover. He made that over Rodman? No, he's... Yo, they are doubling every time Jordan gets the ball. Yo, look at this. Every time. Oh, my God. I got to shoot. Oh, no. There we go. That's what we needed. We needed that stop. We need to tie this game up. Four minutes left. Come on, Jordan. All the way. All the way. Easy dunk. Come on. Tie game. We got to lock in here. 
We got a one point lead. They keep doubling though. There we go. Yup. I told you. I told you about those post moves. Let's go. All right. We're dead. We're, uh, we're up five. We have a decent lead. Oh my gosh. And he missed. Okay. He, he's back in making his post hooks. Okay. We're good. We're good. A five. He's not making that. There's no way. Let's go. And they're fouling. That should be it. He's missing that. Give us the board. We're going to win our sixth ring. Ten more seconds. Michael Jordan is officially the GOAT. If you disagree with me, let me know who you think the GOAT is in the comment section. Let's go. We completed every Jordan challenge. You see why they lean on him night in and night out. And the Chicago Bulls win their sixth championship, completing a second three-feet. Without question, Mike, one of the greatest dynasties this league has ever seen. Six championships in eight seasons. A decade of dominance. The 90s have belonged to Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. And this title run for the Bulls, arguably, Clark, their most difficult. With age and injuries and even some palace intrigue. But for the moment, merely jubilation. You covered it all there, Kevin. What a remarkable run. And now we'll just have to wait and see whether they decide to run it back one more time. This very well, though, could be the final chapter. As you can see, Carl Malone dropped 40. Michael Jordan had 56. I mean, we were just too locked in. Anyways, y'all, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like on the video. As you can see at the top right, I have all 45 out of 45 stars. I'm going to earn my rewards. I'm going to show up on the screen in a second here. Listen, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We have a bunch of 2K23 content coming to you guys this year. Boy, that was a W video. It took a long time to edit and record. And we are the first person in the world to complete all the Jordan challenges. It's really crazy. Hey, man, uh, let me know what y'all think of these Jordan challenges. Let me know um, if you completed it or if you've played it yet, depending on when you're watching this video. Anyways, it's been your boy, Henry, a.k.a. Double H, and I'm out of here, man. Peace.